Hi everyone and welcome to my new series. I will be posting every Thursday a new art journal video which is going to be Christmas themed. I do have lots and lots of products that have just been released but I will combine them with older ones that I have in my stash and I will share 8 different layouts all the way until Christmas. Now depending on the focal point that I choose to work with every time, I will switch to different sizes of art journal books. So for example I may use my dilution size which is one that I love and I use a lot for double page layout but I will also use my Dina Weekly one when I want a larger area to work with and when I want to create one page layouts like today. I might even switch to 6x6 or a custom sized the ones that I like to make and disc pound them or even to other DIY ones that I have been working with lately. So here is an example. They are the ones that uh, you bind with an elastic in the middle. So I will have lots of fun playing in different sizes and different types of journals. You can follow along. Hopefully you will get inspired and of course you can work on your favorite size of art journal. And of course if you want you can turn them into really dimensional projects and work on a canvas. I do have a couple of examples here. These are canvases that I like to work on. If you don't want to work on a book, these are a great option. They are not so big, so you will not get overwhelmed by the white space. Plus, you will get to play with all the mixed media techniques that I will do on my art journal pages. These are about 8 by 8 inches in size and they provide a great way to decorate your craft room or hand them out as lovely gifts. I have a few of them and they do decorate my craft room. So I'm going to take you through my creative process and I'm going to show you how I start on an art journal. So this time I want to use the new Sizzix tie designed by Tim Holtz. This one is called Festive Stems and I fell in love with the moment I saw that. I love the size of them, they are really big. Plus they are on a big large die which means that you can cut out grunge board, chipboard, really thick material, even felt or um, fabric. However, I'm going to work with paper for today. And I'm showing you here how I like to store my big dies just because I don't have the image on top of them and I like to throw away the packaging. I always like to cut out the leaflet from the packaging and I stick it on top of my big dies. So when I browse through them, it is super easy for me to find out what I'm looking for. Now check out a sample of how big these leaves are, which means that this is going to determine which size of art journal I'm going to work on. And that's exactly why I grabbed my Dina Weekly one. This is a great art journal book, it gives you different textures to work with and I like the page, the white pages because they are super thick and they take lots and lots of uh, mediums with uh, sprays and water and it's not going to warp on you. So anyway, I decided to work with this super old Tim Holtz pad. This is an 8x8 pad that I had for years. Probably you have some of these papers in your stash too. Even if you don't have this specific pattern paper, it is a great way to use up old scraps of pattern paper and I will use them to create a border. Now at this stage I have no idea of what I want to create. All I know is that I need a background for those big leaves to, so that I can put them on. Now the idea here is to create a border and at this stage I don't know what I'm going to do on the inside but I just go along with what I have in my mind and I take it from there step by step. So here I'm going to cut out little squares that I can stick down all around the borders. For that I'm using a brush that I dip lightly on water not too much water on the brass and then I'm going to apply my matte medium and stick everything down. I did go over the little pieces on top with matte medium as well just to make sure that everything is nicely stuck there and don't throw away the leftover pieces you can repeat the same process to create a lovely background for your card making and just stick on top a sentiment. Now I'm going to give it a quick uh, dry with my heat gun and this is where I got the idea that I wanted to use that burlap piece on top of my page. I like the texture of it, so this is what I'm going to do. Once everything was dry, I used my scissors to make the page look nice and neat, cutting out all the paper that sticks out. And as I was sticking all those little squares all around my border, the only uh, thing that I was paying attention was to not stick too uh, of the same patterns next to each other so that it looks nice and neat. 
Now I'm going to uh, tear that off and it is possible because I did cut out the other half of the signature in a previous project. So now I'm going to use my scissors and make it smaller. And I'm also going to distress it somehow. This is a great way to add lots of texture on your background and lots of interest. And I think that it is going to provide the best base where I can stick on top my focal point. There are many things that you can do on top of burlap. You can apply gesso, you can add paint, you can spray on top, you can even stencil, which is something that I'm going to do. And you can see how it looks now. I'm going to make it just a bit smaller so that I can see more of that border all around. And I will go back to an old and favorite technique that I used to do a lot. I'm going to add some shadows all around the borders by using a big brush marker. This is a, a technique that I'm able to do just because I have matte medium all over my background. And this provides a non-porous surface for me to smudge the ink before it completely dries and gets permanent. You can get, of course, similar looks by adding some distressing all around, blending your ink there. You can use watercolor on top. Just play with what you have to create a shadow all around. I like to have darker borders just because it makes uh, your eye drawn to the center of my project and it uh, gives a lovely finished look. So the idea of this art journal series is to post one new Christmas themed layout every Tuesday and I hope I will be able to make it until week 8 when it's Christmas. I'm also back in lockdown. The situation in our area was getting out of hand so they had to lock us down. Older kids in high school like my daughter are doing online school but the youngest have to go to school still but they do have to wear masks in, in the class or even outside of the class in the yard. And that's the case with my son who is in middle school. So the situation is not easy and it hasn't been easy for none of us. So let's count out with art until Christmas and let's hope that the next year is going to be a better one. So now with my life update, let's go back to the project. I did add lots and lots of white splashes. I'm doing that with a white paint spray that I have, but you can do with white acrylic paint or even gesso. Just thin it out with water. And because the color of the burlap was too bright for me, I decided to go over it with a brass. This is a very stiff brass by Nouveau and some vintage photo. It doesn't have to be perfect and I'm not going to cover it up completely. Just some areas here and there to make it look more interesting. And again, you can spray on top of it. It's going to take sprays really nicely. Now, I like how it looks on top of my background, but I want to add something extra. And that's why I'm going to bring in one of my older stencils. This is a Christmas one that has lots of uh, Christmas uh, words on top. And I'm going to apply my embossing paste over it. I just apply it with my spatula. And uh, the truth is that this is not going to stay as bright and white as it looks at the moment. It's going to blend a little bit with the Distress Oxide ink that I have on the background. Plus my stencil wasn't completely clean, but this is not a problem, I prefer it like that. Make sure that you use embossing paste or texture paste that is very thick. This way you get a good impression of the stencil, plus it's going to hold its shape and dimension. Now it's time to work on my focal point as my embossing paste is drying. So for that I'm going to go with three oxide uh, sprays. These are a couple of shades of uh, green as well as one brown one. I'm spraying on three pieces of uh, craft cardstock and uh, I'm going to mix them up, apply water on top of them, blend them nicely. I just want to have a non-flat greenish colored paper. You can of course go ahead and cut out your focal points out of colored cardstock or pattern paper if you wish to. If you are wondering on the specific colors that I used, you will find them linked down below, just like everything else that I am using to create this project. So here are the finished pattern papers that I created. I absolutely love how these colors blend together and they create this uh, lovely and interesting background. Now I'm going to use these pieces on top of my die and the fact that this is one of the big dies means that I can cut out three of them if, with one passing. For some of them I went upside down just because I don't want all of my leaves to look the same. So I'm going to run them through my die cutting machine and you see it cuts like butter through all these three layers. 
And I'm also going to bring in some scraps of this uh, glitter cardstock and I'm going to cut out the berries out of that. Again, I'm cutting out three little pieces so that I can stack one on top of the other and with one passing I will end up having lots and lots of berries. Now my background already has a vintage look and feel on it with that burlap and all that pattern paper that I have on the edges. That's why I'm going to continue this look and feel on my leaves. I'm inking only some of the edges with vintage photo. This is probably my most used ink that I have ever had in my stash. And now it's time to put my layout together. I'm going to use some double-sided tape to stick the burlap down. It is really strong and it did hold up nicely, that burlap on top of paper, but you can use any type of glue that you feel it's going to hold these two together. So I'm peeling off the backing, I'm going to place it on top of my page. And of course I'm manipulating the burlap just because my embossing paste was already dry. Now I'm going to put together my focal point, all those three branches, one on top of the other, and I'm just sticking them together with white glue. I had this red polka dot uh, ribbon on my stash for years, so I am creating a little bow and this is going to go at the top of my mistletoe to embellish it a little bit and to give that touch of red on top of my focal point. And again I'm going to use my white glue to stick that down on the burlap and I found that it holds just fine. This was my Nouveau Deluxe glue which I absolutely love. And then with that I'm going to stick the bow on top. And of course let's not forget the berries. So I'm going to add some dots of glue here and there, spread them around and then stick the berries on top. Now this is an afterthought, this is where I uh, was looking in the box of uh, embellishments that I have for Christmas and I found those tokens from a previous release by Tim Holtz. I want to use one of them that says Holy Jolly. I'm going to apply on top some acrylic paint, this is an acrylic paint marker. This is going to go inside the etched areas and highlight the engraved uh, words there and just um, wipe it with my fingers. So I'm going to tuck it underneath the bow. I did use a glue dot to stick that down but you can go with your glue gun or any other uh, type of glue. Now in my box of Christmas embellishments I did find uh, all those sayings. These are from uh, last year's release by Tim Holtz. These are cheapboard sayings that are all about Christmas. I like that they have a white background with uh, red letters. And there are so many in the packaging that they are going to last me forever. And I decided to go with the one that says deck the holes. I'm going to stick that down and I did go all around it with a little bit of um, vintage photo so that it doesn't look so bright. You can stop right here or if you are like me and you cannot resist your white gel pen, just add some highlights on some of the leaves. So this is my finished layout. Here are some close-up photos. Just like always, you will find linked down below everything I used. I hope that you had fun today, that you got inspired. Let me know in the comments what you think about the new series that I decided to do until Christmas. Thank you all so much for spending some time with me today and I'll see you all next time.